Handy Mugglers, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you for all your great feedback last week. Thanks for watching The Safe Room. We really appreciate it. Thanks for the subscribing. We always like that. All right, so this week uh, we're going to be talking to you guys about post-production. We have a couple segments. We're going to talk about how we ingested the footage and created proxy footage. How we did all of the VFX. And the color grade. And I'll touch a little bit upon editing and finishing as well. One of the biggest... Uh, you know, obstacles that there was was the fact that uh, we did want to do a 4K finish. Uh, so through the our, through our entire post production pipeline, we had to make sure to maintain the 4K files, which were not easy to work with, especially in the visual effects end. It's like mm, it was weird. Yeah, but that said, I just want to say before we start that this is not meant to be a tutorial. This is really just an overview of how we did this stuff to you just know, our general workflow and just you know just the basic concepts behind it. So here's our first segment. It's about uh, how we ingested the footage and how we created our proxy footage and why. All right. So before we even got to like edit or or do anything with this footage, the first thing that we had to do was create proxy footage. The proxy footage exists to be easier on your computer. All right. So obviously, like I'm. I'm not going to want to be editing with, you know, the raw 4K red footage. It's going to be slow, and it's going to be absolutely miserable. Uh, if, you, if you edit in Premiere, you can usually do it anyway, but uh, I edit in Avid, and it's just easier to make proxy footage. Basically, we come in here, you know, we've got all of our footage from the entire shoot, and I'm just going to basically select everything, and I'm going to do an export. And this is where uh, I'm going to basically make my uh, my proxy footage. So since I'm editing in Avid, I'm going to want MXF footage. And I'm going to want 1080p, 23976. And this is the highest compression, crappiest footage I can possibly make. That's what I'm making right now. Okay, debayer settings just as low as possible for the one that we're making because again this is just for my purposes to edit with this is just for my purposes just to, literally just to edit with so what's going to happen is I'm going to bring this into Avid I'm going to cut the film I'm going to sync up all the audio and then when the cut is done done just totally done I'm going to send an AAF into DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to basically tell Resolve okay this was proxy footage link back to the real footage and Resolve is going to import my project as it was in Avid with the proxy footage but this time it's going to have the red clips in place of the proxy clips so I'll be able to relink back to the high quality footage to do my final output so I would do this click export and it's going to take forever and it's going to render out the red footage and that's the first step in the pipeline and now for one of the single most underappreciated parts of filmmaking the color grading section. Hey guys, Nick here, and I'm going to talk to you about how we color graded the safe room. So we graded on the original red files, 4K. So in order to color grade on the red files, you need some serious horsepower. So I work on a Mac Pro with a uh, third-party graphics card and a Blackmagic Design capture card, which I use to output my video signal to my Flanders Scientific Grading Monitor. Um, you really need to be using an external monitor if you color grade, otherwise your grade isn't going to transfer nicely to uh, to other to other monitors. Like I said, we graded on the reds. The only time that we didn't was when we were working with ProRes clips, which uh, were what we used when we had to do VFX shots. I would render out a ProRes clip, Paul would do the VFX, and I'd get it back and I'd grade that. So I wanted to show you guys a couple quick grades just so that you kind of get an idea of uh, what we had to do on this film. Uh, this is a shot where Green Glass is getting up out of his car. Okay, one thing you're going to notice is uh, this is a VFX clip, but this is before the VFX were applied. We removed the registration, the 2013 registration, so in the actual film that's not there, that's been replaced. But for our purposes here, this is fine. So this is how it comes out of camera. It's on the red log film, gamma curve. Uh, if you want, you can use red gamma 3 or something. You have a different starting point, but I think you get the nicest result from starting here at red log film. So the first note here, I've got just a base grade. You can see uh, it introduced a couple problems. The car is blown out now. It's it's too bright. And I'll just turn on the scopes so that you guys can see that. Anyone who knows how to read scopes. Usually I work with external scopes. But this is so you guys can see. Okay, so and also another problem is Felix's jacket is blown out. So you'll see. I'll come over here in node 2. Turn that on. That's off. That's on. You can see the details brought back. And I also have this window motion tracked. I just brought the highlights down in that node 
on just his jacket, and that's a lot nicer looking. Okay, node three. This is where I fix the car. You'd see I'm bringing all that detail back and fixing the colors. This was just an isolation. No tracking, no windows, just isolating those colors. That stays with it. Last node, just a quick gamma correction. Just makes everything look a little bit nicer. So you can see we've got the before. and the after. This is a sort of a take on the blockbuster look where everything is kind of tealish blue except for the skin tones. So to do this, I'll just turn all these off. Again, started here from Red Log Film. Doesn't look that great, but uh, it's a better starting point. This is a Kodak lookup table that I put on here. Uh, I got that from Juan Malara. So I'm coming in here now, and this is just a general tweak up on this node. And these three nodes here are really where the look is going to come from. This top node here is what's going to give everything that blue push. It's hard to see because it doesn't update in here until all three of these are on because they're working together. But if you look closely at this node, you can see it's all blue, including his skin, everything. This node is a similar story, but I'm bringing back the whites of his lab coat. And then when I turn this on, you're going to see the result of all three of these, which is that. And you can see his skin is not washed out and blue like in these, because in this node, I've done an isolation on his skin. All right. I've isolated his skin. I've pulled the skin from the previous nodes in, and I've just pushed a little, a little bit more flesh tone in there. So it just looks a lot more natural. You can get away with a lot if your skin looks good. So that's the before, that's the after. So like I mentioned in the video before, now Paul's going to talk to you about his visual effects. As I've mentioned in the past, there are two kinds of VFX in my book. There are the ones that you plan out for cool shots that you think are going to look cool, and then there's your oh crap effects. This would be an oh crap effect. We did this shot, the car's beautiful, however some of you who are clever might notice what's wrong with it. Apparently this car is registered for the next 63 years. Now that's just something we didn't quite notice. So we're going to fix it. How do we fix it? That is actually kind of simple. What we did was we took this into Mocha. And to take it into Mocha, you go to animation, track in Mocha. We tracked that shape. And you can see the null object follows it perfectly. It took a little bit of finessing, but you know we got it there. Now once that was there, we simply went to Photoshop, created this, and we created, once again, that. Now we took those two images, we attached them to the null object. Now that looks pretty horrible. No one's going to buy that. So how do we get them to look better? Well, we do a corner pin to make sure that it fits. A little bit of an edge blur. Then we do a little bit of a box blur because of the focal distance and all that good stuff. It wouldn't really be that in focus. And then, as Nick told you, a little bit of color grade action. We do the same with the other one. And now, you would never know. So we've got a little parking permit thing and uh, yeah. Now for an actual planned visual effect. See it's important to know what you need for the effect that you're going to create because it makes your visual effects artist's life a lot easier. So let's turn all these layers off. So what did we do to get that in there? Well, these two little bits right here Label tracking data TV1, tracking data TV2 are the tracking data for the TV. Makes sense, I know. We went over here, we took this and we brought it into Mocha, and I put a nice little mask around this shape and got our tracking data. Now that tracking data was brought in 
to our composition. Now once we had the tracking data for these two shots, we were able to take our video clips and drop them in. And now there's one really, really important thing you got to do. Now what we did was we duplicated the base, which is the actual clip with the TV, and we dropped the opacity. And we masked around the TV. Now what that does is that takes some of the detail, like the highlights, and it creates a reflection. This is the difference between your effect looking like that and looking like somebody just superimposed it on there and your effect looking like it belongs in the scene. It's a simple touch, but it's the little touches that make the difference, especially with an effect like this. So those are two effects from the movie and uh, we'll be posting more in-depth tutorials for those who are interested. As I mentioned to you guys before, uh, I edited this in Avid Media Composer. I feel it's the uh, nonlinear editor to use. Um, it made working with the with the proxy footage easy. It made relinking footage easy. Uh, you know, you guys know what editing is. Obviously, there's no need for us to go into a whole video about it. So, so that's that. We're really glad that you guys watched the movie. We're sorry that we spoiled a bunch of stuff in the post production video, but you should have seen it already. Spoilers, you knew that coming in, but that's okay. And as always, if you have any questions, you want to know any specific details, leave a comment on either this video or the safe room itself, and we will answer them. Yep, thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't seen it already, go check out the safe room, and uh, see you next time.